Tacitus refers to the god Odin as Mercury, Thor as Hercules, and Tyr as Mars. He calls the Isis of the Swebi, who is known as Freya. I think it should be pointed out that Herodotus also relates that the Hyperboreans are descended from Hermes, connecting Odin once again to Mercury. But Julius Caesar himself, who spent many years of his life in Gaul, relates that they are descended from Dis. This makes sense because the ancient form of Bacchus, who is the frenzy god, and Odin is the god of the frenzy who possesses. Bacchus is also the god of the frenzy who possesses. Both Odin and Bacchus are connected to the all-father Dis, the king of the underworld. This connection between Hades and Bacchus goes back to the Greeks as well. Here we see two depictions of Bacchus and Hades, both looking identical. Black beards, ivy wreath crown, and holding a Thrysis staff. Saturn's role as the devourer and underworld king can be traced to Egypt. Sobek, also known as Seb or Geb, is either depicted with the head of a snake or a crocodile as he devours the souls of the wicked. In Greco-Roman Egypt, Seb or Geb was equated with the Greek god Kronos because he held a quite similar position in the Greek pantheon as the father of the gods, Zeus, Hades, Poseidon, as Seb did in Egyptian mythology. This equation is particularly well attested in Teptunus in the southern Phaeum. Seb and Kronos were here part of a local version of the cult of Sobek, Lord of the Four Corners, the crocodile god. The equation was shown on the one hand in local iconography of the gods in which Seb is depicted as a man with attributes of Kronos and Kronos with the attributes of Seb. On the other hand, the priests of the local main temple identify themselves in Egyptian texts as priests of Sakhnatubis Seb or Sakhnatubis Geb, but in Greek texts as priests of Sakhnatubis Kronos. Accordingly, Egyptian names formed with the name of the god Seb or Geb were just popular among local villagers as Greek names derived from Kronos, especially Kronian. In the case of the Egyptians, it was this destroyer Seb who takes on all the traits of the earth shaker Poseidon, Hades, king of the underworld and the sky father Zeus, and he holds a trident like Poseidon, but also like Shiva. Seb, like Shiva, can be connected with the Proto-Indo-European Sawa through this god Sabatios, who also has a Proto-Indo-European root name, Siwa. Shiva, one of the principal deities in Hinduism, is indeed associated with time through his aspect of Kala, Kala, which means time in Sanskrit, is one of the many aspects of Shiva. In this form, Shiva is considered the lord of time, destruction, and change, just as Saturn has the same traits. He is often depicted as the destroyer of the universe, who brings about the end of time to make way for new creation. This cyclical nature of time in the universe is a key concept in Hindu cosmology. Kalis and Kali have similar Proto-Indo-European etymologies. The word for Kalis, as you can see here on this chart, to call, to cry, is also related to the word calendar or the calends of a month in the Roman calendar. But here we see Kel to turn in motion, pivot, pole star, connecting with time and the cycle nature of the heavens and the sky that turns in a clockwise nature. Kel and Kelly are related through this Proto-Indo-European word. So the goddess Kali, who's the consort of Shiva, just as Kalis is the father of Saturn in Roman mythology, 
and Calus is depicted on the cuirass of Augustus of Prima Porta at the very top above the four horses of Helios's quadriga. He is mature bearded man who holds a cloak over his head so that it billows in the form of an arch, a conventional sign of deity that recalls the vault of the firmament. He is balanced and paired with the personification of earth at the bottom of the cuirass. These two figures have also been identified as Saturn and Magda Mater to represent the new Saturnian golden age of Augustan ideology. On the altar of the lairs, now held by the Vatican, Calus in his chariot appears among with Mithras above the figure of Augustus. The name Calus occurs dedicatory inscriptions in the connection to the cult of Mithras. The Mithraic Calus is sometimes depicted allegorically as an eagle bending over the sphere of heaven marked with symbols of the planet or the zodiac. In the Mithraic context, he is associated with Catus and can appear as Calus Aeternus, eternal sky. A form of a Hora Mazda is invoked in Latin as Calus Aeternus Jupiter. The walls of some of the Mithraea feature allegorical depictions of the cosmos with Oceanus and Calus. The Mithraeum of Dyberg represents the tripartite world of Calus, Oceanus, and Tellus below Phaeton Heliodramus. Mitra Varuna is a deity or dyad of deities that played a significant role in the Proto-Indo-European religion as well as the Vedic religion. Composed of two distinct elements, Mitra and Varuna, this divine pair represented different aspects of sovereignty, with Mitra embodying reason, order, and benevolence, and Varuna symbolizing violence, darkness, and inspiration of the frenzy. The concept of Mitra as Brahman and Varuna as the king of Gandharva is a particular suggestive formula. The Gandharva normally live in a mysterious world of their own, beyond the darkness into which Indra smote the singular Gandharva for the greater good of the Brahman. In Varuna's legend, the Gandharva intervene at a tragic moment to restore his failed virility with a magic herb, just as the first Luperki put an end to the sterility of the woman Romulus had abducted. This Mitra Varuna dyad can be seen as an ancient form of the Apollonian Dionysian dualism that we see in Greek mythology sky and underworld, dark and light, righteousness and liberty. In an earlier model, Georges Dumézil proposed that Waranos, also the god in the reconstructed dialogue, is the nocturnal sky and benevolent counterpart of Diwos, with possible cognates the Greek Aranos and Vedic Varuna from the Proto-Indo-European Waru, which means to encompass over. Waranos may have personified the firmament or dwelled in the night sky. In both Greek and Vedic poetry, Aranos and Varuna are portrayed as wide-looking, bounding or seizing their victims and having or being heavenly seat. This dyad can be seen in the Thracian religion with Clement of Alexandria compared to Jesus being in the bosom of Yahweh, which he compared to Sabazius being the godhead of Bacchus and Zeus or Saturn. Sabazios, a god of the Thracians and Phrygians, is also known from Greek and Latin sources as Sabasios or Sabadios, his name related to the Macedonian word Sadoi or Satyrs. According to some scholars, he was a Thracian mountain god whose cult was carried by Phrygian emigrants from Thrace to Anatolia. Greek sources from the 5th century BCE onward mention Sabazios as a Thracian god. In Athens, his cult's initiation ceremonies took place by night, and adepts were purified by being rubbed by serpents. A sacramental drink was also involved. The identification of Sabatios with Dionysus, which occurs regularly in Hellenistic sources, is unquestionable. He might have had the features of the heavenly god, Hence, he was later identified 
the Semitic god Baal, both of them receiving Greek epithet Hypsistos, or highest, or supreme. Sabazios' name connected with the Proto-Indo-European Siwo, connected to Shiva, as well as Saturn, meaning his own, the idea of freedom which constantly shows up in the epithets of Dionysus. Franz Cumont has suggested a relationship with the Illyrian Sabai or Sabayum, identifying beer extracted from cereals, such as we see in the Eleusinian Mysteries, the Bacchus and Demeter. Sabatios connected with the Proto-Indo-European word for sap as a sap god, with his juices and fluids being drunk in the Mysteries. This translation corresponds well to the pattern of Dionysus, who has the divinity of humidity and such was connected to the vegetation and intoxication. 